Zombly here with what I am going to be playing next. Um, it's going to kind of go hand in hand with uh, um, Skyrim. I'm going to play this one at the same time, but you'll notice it's Strike Fighters 2. I also uh, have uh, Strike Fighters 2 Europe, so I'm going to have several different campaigns. But uh, some of you guys have, may have heard of this. Uh, most of you probably haven't. It was published a long time ago, and back in like the 2000s, by uh, Third Wire Productions. But then um, that was the original. <sighs> They're considered the Strike Fighters One series now, but uh, beforehand it was uh, like it was Wings Over, and then it would be your theater. So you had Wings Over Vietnam, Wings Over Europe stuff like that. Well, they re-updated the series and they released them as Strike Fighters 2 and this was back in 2010-ish and so they've been updating them and we still have several new releases. Um, I don't have the new ones yet. Um, I, I just got uh, two of them here which is the original Strike Fighters 2 and then Strike Fighters 2 over Europe as I said. Um, but uh, I think uh, this will be an interesting run for you guys. It's, uh, it's considered a light jet combat simulator and by light it means that it's uh, it's not quite arcade like as in you can't just you know slam the throttle forward and start firing guns and racking up kills you you do have to kind of follow a sort of procedure but uh, it's a light simulation in terms of you don't sit down in the cockpit and you don't have to know exactly how to start the jet um, for example the engine start sequence is just control I whereas a hardcore simulator like uh, like the new A10 that's just come out, um, the DCS I believe A10. That one you have to actually know how to start a freaking A10 Warthog. So um, huge learning curve. This one, it's got a little bit of a learning curve, but not much. So I'm gonna start us a campaign after I set up a pilot and. Uh, the campaign I'm going to choose is quite interesting. It's going to be a fictional one. Um, it it's comes with the game. It's vanilla. Um, the only mods I'm using for this game are a uh, a sky scenery mod, which kind of like improves clouds and lighting. And then um, I've got several different terrain mods, um, which kind of like boost up the uh, the graphics a little bit. Because even on a absolutely high, I guess they consider it in this game. Um, it should be considered uh, unlimited, I believe. Yeah, graphics detail is unlimited. And then if you go into custom, you know, I've got everything pretty much unlimited as far as it'll go. Um, it still doesn't look that great because it's an older game. And uh, the, the uh, developers and I think publishers of the game, Third Wire, uh, they wanted it to be able to run over a large spectrum of machines. So they didn't, uh, they didn't quite throw everything... Uh, in like uh, you know they didn't give you a lot of customization basically it's kinda eh looking but the nice thing is is they left it open for modding which allows it to look a little bit better you'll notice it's still not the greatest but it is a heck of an improvement over the vanilla so uh, anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check my audio levels and whatnot um, make sure this is recording this time since I've learned my lesson several times over from uh, Skyrim but uh, at any rate, once I get back from that, I'll show you the campaign settings and whatnot, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get to jamming. I'll get shot up a lot, and uh, it should be quite entertaining for you. Hello and welcome back. Um, I went ahead and checked my levels, did some adjustments and whatnot. Uh, should be all good to go now. Uh, as you can see, I've I've made my pilot here, uh, Zombie Lee. Um, Another thing I forgot to mention earlier in my introduction was uh, you'll notice in the background here as my cell phone goes off. Um, this is an F4 Phantom. Uh, the time frame of the game in the original is from the late 50s to the mid 70s, I believe. And then in the uh, the other game that I have, which is Strike Fighters 2 Europe, um, that expands the time frame from the mid 70s up to like the mid 80s ish. And all the games go together when you have them. Like I said, I've only got the two. So uh, the campaign I'm going to do uh, is pretty much all going to be in older jets. Um, I think the most modern one in the series of games that I have is going to be the F-15 Eagle, which I probably won't fly that in this campaign. Um, I'm going to uh, fly a campaign from the original Strike Fighters, which allows you to be a mercenary. 
And the nice thing about that, or the more interesting slash fun thing, not so much nice, depending, is that uh, all your equipment and planes and everything else is going to cost you money. You're basically a mercenary fighter pilot squadron that is hired by a fictional government in the Middle East to help fight another fictional Middle East government that is sided with the USSR. Um, the whole theme of the Strike Fighters 2 series, um, at least the games that I've read about and the ones that I own, is that it's basically the Cold War and an alternate timeline as if the Cold War went hot. In fact, um, Strike Fighters 2 Europe is um, basically about that whole setting, whereas like Kennedy didn't do so well with the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis and negotiations failed and it started a war. Not so much a nuclear war, but it did start a war. Um, when we go into the campaign mode for the campaign I'm going to be doing for the mercenary, um, you'll see that uh, it, it'll give you a background on everything. It'll explain what's going on. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. We're going to create the campaign and we're going to do Burning Sands, which is going to take place on September 1st of 1959. Um, see. September of 1959, troops of the Empire of Paran, led by Tsar Komar and backed by the Soviet Union, cross the border and invade the Kingdom of Daimar. In response, the United Nations passes a resolution to, to defend the kingdom from the aggression. So as you can see, the United Nations, which includes the United States, is starting to get involved in trying to kick back this uh, Soviet-supported kingdom from um, invading this democratic kingdom. So you've got the settings kind of like what was happening in the 50s, 60s, and 70s with Vietnam and Korea and all that is it was basically democracy versus communism. So that's going to be an interesting little thing, but now you'll see that we're going to be the mercenary service, the first special ops wing. Um, the first special operations wing was formed in June 1959 by Prince Fa'ad of the Kingdom of Daimar. It was part of the emergency buildup of air power to supplement the under-equipped Daimar Air Force, which faced ever-increasing threats from Soviet-backed Empire of Paran. Intrigued and impressed by the legendary flying tigers of World War II, Prince Fa'ad formed several mercenary squadrons filled with foreign pilots willing to fly and fight for money and glory. Hell's fucking yes, that's what I'm gonna be. And I love me my older jets, so I chose the uh, earliest campaign possible, which takes place in 59, and you'll notice that I'll be flying an F-100D Super Saber, which is the offspring of the F-86 Saber, I guess you could say. And uh, basically this thing is uh, a jet with uh, machine guns, so you still kind of got like your World War II stylish thing. However, it does have uh, pylons to mount um, AIM-9 Sidewinders, which the original Sidewinders in this era, uh, they couldn't hit the floor falling out of bed. So <laughs> it's basically a guns-only dogfighter, and uh, that should be quite hilarious for you guys because I'm going to die a lot. Um, I'm not very good at this, and the AI is very challenging. Um, as you see, I've got everything just basically set on normal, which is going to be fucking challenging enough. I've gotten one kill once playing it and testing it on my own. I got a gun kill on a uh, F4 Hunter, I think it was, or... Well, it wasn't an F4, because F4 is a Phantom, but it was something F, and it was a Hunter. It was a USSR plane, obviously. Um, I, I cut his tail off with the machine guns. It was, it was pretty badass, but I haven't been able to do that feat since. Um, another thing I should talk about is uh, if I die, um, I think that'll be the end of the campaign. If I eject and I'm captured as a prisoner, that'll be the end of the campaign. But if I'm shot down and I eject and I'm only injured, or if I make it back somehow, we'll keep going. Uh, however, I do want to do a long extended Let's Play of this, because uh, like I said, I want to do it in conjunction with uh, my other Let's Play of uh, Skyrim. So I think I'll just uh, do a different campaign with a different pilot, and we'll just keep going. And hopefully I'll get better the more I play it, and I won't have to start over so much. Anyways, let's get this accepted. Um, yep, it's going to be Zombies Campaign 1. This is going to be loud. Please forgive me, this is as low as I can get the levels. Anyway. Okay, so um, the above little text box is basically explaining what I just explained earlier from the uh, setting of the campaign. But here it's going to be September 12th, uh, early in the morning, about 7.45 a.m., around D8 Airfield, 
near Al Samar, somewhere in the Middle East. This is where our first mission is going to take place. Um, we're supposed to provide a combat air patrol over Mossack. Destroy enemy any enemy aircraft approaching your assigned area. So on September 12, 1959, um, we got our first call to action here as mercenary pilots. Um, our call sign for this mission is going to be Viper, and they're giving me a second pilot to go with me. The nice thing about being the mercenary group is you can choose who goes with you. So I could go by myself if I wanted, but I don't want that. So let's see. Being as how I have zero missions under my belt and zero aircraft kills, I should probably take a more experienced gent. Let's go with Obi Vasquez. And you'll see that uh, all the mercenary pilots have uh, funny little nicknames like Razor, Guts, Spider, Jump, <laughs> Jump Reese. I don't even want to know why that guy is called that. Poor bastard. So at any rate, in the other campaigns I'll do, the more official ones where I'll be part of like the, the Marine Corps or the Air Force, you'll notice that everybody just has basic names. Only the Marines have, or mercenaries, excuse me, have these funny little nicknames. So that's why I called myself Zombie. Only because that, yeah, not because I'm zombly. Come on, you know. Anyway, um, I am going to take a second guy with me because I don't know what I'm doing. We'll make sure he's okay. And then we'll go to loadout here, and you'll see that I've got 10 grand to F around with. I'm going to go generic silver. And my number, I think, I'm going to go with my lucky number of... 44. And uh, I don't know how far we're going to end up going. I'm going to give us about 75% fuel. I want 100% of my machine gun ammunition, of course. It's 560 rounds, I believe. Um, do, do, do. I don't need any rocket pods. We're not going to be doing any ground attacks. Don't need any drop tanks or bombs. Um, don't need napalm. I think I will take four sidewinders though for myself and Viper 1 2. He's also going to be a generic silver and we'll leave him at 54, whatever. Um, as you'll see, we've got 16 aircraft and we could buy Skyhawks for 35 grand if we had the money, but we don't. And I don't know anything about Skyhawks. I personally love the uh, plane I'm flying right now, so we'll keep it as that. So we've got four aim sidewinders for him. And yeah, we'll go ahead and start our mission, so I'll come back as soon as everything loads. See you guys then. Alright. Looks like we're in it. Viper 1, tower. Wind 180. F5. Cleared for takeoff. Contact departure. Alright, sounds good. So we got our clearance to take off. Gonna go ahead and disengage the wheel brakes. Oops. Go ahead and select my cannons and go to air to air mode. Get off the ground and get out here and start protecting. Why well, suddenly start targeting a uh, friendly jeep there? But we'll find out. our airfield. We should have my wingman taken off any minute here. Um, I notice my sound levels are probably still excruciatingly loud, so... Uh, my goodness, you guys probably won't be able to hear me very well, and I apologize. I always do this with games. I think I get my sound levels good. I do not. right into the sun, of course. So let's take a look at our map and see what we're dealing with here. Okay, looks like we're going to have quite a flight ahead of us. And I always forget my time skip key. So I will do you guys the favor, and I'll go ahead and uh, cut the, uh, the video here, and then I'll come back when I get into uh, a furball or something. 
So, I will see you guys later. Alright, looks like uh, we uh, just leveled out here at uh, 11,600. this air superiority we're just doing a combat air patrol um, the more kills we get the more money we make they fund us for our kills kind of like a bounty system it's pretty badass but uh, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully get some of those kills see some sort of actions we're not just up here burning fuel and wasting money bandit, bandit. maybe we can get lucky and intercept those but in the meanwhile I, I will see you guys when that shit happens Alright, the F-100 Super Saber is a supersonic aircraft, so I'm going to kick on the loud-ass afterburner and probably be hearing any of my commentary, but I'm trying to get us up to a mock speed because it looks like the Ramrod flight has found a couple of L-28 Beagles, which I believe are Russian bombers, so as you can hear, they are engaging missiles and machine guns, so let's see if we can get out there. Man, I really thought I adjusted these levels. You probably can't hear me whatsoever, and I apologize. My first videos are always shit, so forgive me. Okay, we just came into a huge thicket of bandits. Uh, Red Crown, which is our tactical flight operator, uh, they, uh, They've spotted them down there towards the bottom and towards the right. And it uh, looks like a bunch of MiGs. So Ramrod's got a hold of those L-28 Beagles. We've got some MiGs to worry about. And I'm probably going to get shot down. Uh, MiGs are very difficult to fly against. some L-28s it looks like off our left front there. 
me in the turn here. Sit air to air. I'm gonna take you out, jerk. Oof. I forgot they have tail gunners. so far away. I might have to see if I can find out how far the mission looks like or something like that. 
the sake of time, I'm going to come back when and if I can ever intercept this guy. So I think I've been running this video a little too long. So we'll come back when I finally uh, try to shoot someone down yet again.
Enjoy the ride down, amigo. Poor bastard. See a parachute either. Nope, I don't think he got out of that one. It was spinning pretty bad. Alright. Well, two is definitely of no use. I think. I don't know. Two. No gun. No damage. Yeah, he's out of missiles and his gun, so I'm just going to... Viper, leave. Red Crown. Mission accomplished. Good job. Hey, excellent. Cool, so... Uh, Wingman, go ahead and RTV. I'm going to do the same. And, uh, I will be back when I, uh, attempt to land this thing, and I don't know if you guys have thought about it or noticed. I know I didn't when I got in this plane. Um, I'll show you one thing. It, it is a very, very beautiful plane. Right? Very pretty. I love the F-100 Super Saber. Yet, when you get in the cockpit and you try to land this thing, that instrument panel, especially the, uh, this heads-up display and your gun sight and all the, uh, the radar gun sight components and whatnot, that big boxy thing, really gets in your way when you're trying to see that runway and make a landing. So, uh, you guys might be, uh, highly entertained when I case it into the ground here. So, I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, we definitely earned some money to really earn his share. The nice thing about this uh, game is it's a dynamic campaign, so we definitely made some progress. This was good. We established air superiority. Uh, looks like Ford and Ramrod may have taken out a couple of uh, fighter bombers, perhaps. And uh, I, uh, I got one under my name, so I don't look completely stupid. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the last waypoint here and then turn around and head her home. So I'll see you guys then. Alright. There's home base for us, too, so let's try to auger this thing in, and I literally might die right here, which would be um, highly disappointing, to say the least, um, but expected from me, too, you know, I mean, it is me, after all. Kind of just uh, circling here with my air brakes on, bleed off speed and altitude, go ahead and retract the speed brakes, though. This thing starts to uh, wibble wobble at about a hundred something knots. It just does not turn. Uh, I'm happy I was able to get my first kill on camera, though. I thought for sure uh, two was going to mop up everybody. He uh, definitely got a hell of a lot more to me, but I chose probably the most experienced guy in the uh, squadron. So, Green Scorpion Mercenary Squadron Two, I guess is what we'll call ourselves based on the uh, decals there on our uh, ships here. Uh, there's two right there for me. Looks like he's got a better approach. He knew to descend a hell of a lot earlier than I did, I guess. So, all in all, this should be quite interesting. Um, I'm probably going to leave these videos long, um, just because I think it would be pointless to split these up. Um, most of my videos I end up splitting up, and uh, I don't know, it just doesn't... Uh, Basically, the airfield disappears behind the bulk of this uh, instrument panel. It's ridiculous, but what can you do, right? That's the uh, one thing I noticed about trying to land the uh, Super Saver here is if you get a long approach and come at a little bit high so your descent angle towards the airfield is a little more extreme than what you'd normally want, you can see the airfield a little bit more and pull off a somewhat decent landing. And you'll see what I mean by somewhat decent. Oh, apparently I've got a lock on my, uh, my teammate there not want to push the trigger at all. I'm sure 
exits the field. Should not be coming in behind him like this, but I guess I'm going to anyway. Okay. Brakes immediately, please. I think he was smart and turned away. He knows that he's got a rookie flying behind him. <laughs> Alright, not a bad landing for me. I usually, uh, usually do a hell of a lot worse, so I can be happy with this in all ways. Except I missed the turn. Brakes, brakes, brakes. I'll just pretend that didn't happen. Just drive around backwards on the runway, it's cool. That's what I get for not paying attention. Alright. So, uh... This has been a first successful mission. Um, I think uh, I'll come back uh, after we uh, figure out uh, what we earned and what we didn't earn here. So, uh, let's, let's see what happened. Alright, apparently uh, the Kingdom of Daimar was quite impressed with how we operated. Well, we spent 40 minutes in the air, we took out four primary targets, uh, which they considered an outstanding success. Um, I think three of those were pretty much my uh, my wingman there. Uh, so we earned eleven thousand dollars for this mission, and we now have twenty grand. Um, One thousand, or er, goodness numbers, come on, Zombly. Twenty thousand one hundred twenty dollars available. So um, excellent. Let's uh, oops. Uh, let's uh, just keep it going, shall we? So. Uh, when we come back, we'll have a different mission from the one you see here. I haven't figured out how to, uh, because it is a dynamic uh, campaign generator sort of deal. Um, when I exit and I come back and load from where I last left off, this will be a whole new mission. So ignore this dude. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody who uh, subscribes, comments, watches. It, it makes my day. So This has been Zombly with Let's Play Strike Fighters 2 Mercenary Mode.